I'm genuinely excited to try this car. It's not every day there's a brand new auto brand on the planet, but in addition to which, can you genuinely get everything you're looking for in a large SUV for 20,000 less? I'm pretty excited to find out the answer to that. Now, for those of you who are saying either I've never heard of Way or I've heard of them, but I don't know what they're about, they're owned by Great Wall Motors China, and that is not a small car company at all. But this is their first entrance into the market in Europe. They've called it the Coffee Zero One because in China, Coffee Zero One and Coffee Zero Two go by latte and mocha, but obviously with the Opal Mocha, we already have those brand names present. So to keep things nice and simple, they've called them Coffee Zero One for the bigger one, Coffee Zero Two for the smaller, the idea being that they're supposed to be invigorating like caffeine. Well, we'll find out in just a little bit how true that is. And look here, we have this kind of knitted chrome effect in the front and right in the middle of that design is this. This is the Way logo. This from the founder's hometown is an iconic building which you will know if you know where this car comes from in China. But to me, if you take a slightly further step back, it looks a little bit reminiscent of the Lincoln, the American car design. And I don't know if that's entirely accidental because the whole bold nature of the front of this car and in front, the larger SUV itself is to me very much an American design icon. So I don't think there's anything wrong with making that callback visually. Four meters, 87 or 192 inches. The side is also reminiscent of the front. There's enough going on here to make you feel that you have a stylish, almost executive level car, but not too much to make an obvious statement. There are some really nice discreet touches, like as you saw when I walked towards the car, these door handles pop out to greet you. Interesting to see that we still have a very strong chrome accenting going on at the exact same time that we're hearing more and more from European car manufacturers that they're moving away from this. So a more traditional styling in terms of what it presents with. Round at the back and you can see that this in fact is absolutely a large SUV, a big bulbous base, the design. And I like the styling of the brand logo in the rear. It's clean, it's simple, it's straightforward. It's not overblown or overstated. Way's decision to enter this market with a hybrid model is largely because in China, this is sold as an ICE only. So rather than making a brand new model and coming to the market with a full electric first out, the sensible move according to Way was to go originally with the hybrid. That means you need lots of space for batteries. There are significant advantages to that, notably a huge range. Now this car has an immense pure electric range of up to 150 kilometers. It's got a 40 kilowatt hour battery, which is vast for any hybrid car. So clearly all of that has to go somewhere. The idea being, look, we've done our market research. This is what people want from a large SUV. They want the range in their car. They don't want to be concerning themselves about anything else, but they still want the economy, the efficiency, and also the sustainability. Well, we can get into that later. But for now, I think the rear of this car, again, they've done just enough to give it character and not too much to put people off. So, I like the way the roof line tapers off. That's a nice design feature. Does it mean that we're gonna be hit with less headroom in the rear? We'll find out when we take a look inside. Let's start with the key. And if you think that design is slightly, whoops, that demonstrates the weather. Apparently the key is waterproof. If you think that looks slightly reminiscent of the design on the front of the car, you would be entirely correct. I like it. It's got a solid enough feel in your hand, but it's light enough that it won't be bothersome in the pocket. And they managed to get the brand identity into it as well. No mean feat. So, way are really enthusiastic that you think of them as a premium brand. Obviously it takes a while to establish that. So the first thing that's gonna set that off is when you approach your car, he said optimistically, aha, the car knows I'm coming and it greets me in exactly this way. That's hardly a new feature, but it's nicely delivered here. And if I pull the car open, <laughs> it will let me know that it just locked itself. Okay, here we are. Now let's do, our standard door test and see what we can hear about the build quality. That is really nice. Even if I give that really quite a decent bit of effort. Sounds good to me. What you get from this car when you look at it is a really pleasing feeling as to how solidly it's been put together. This quilting on the door panel is absolutely lovely. Not only does it look good and feel good, but when your hand brushes up against it when you're in the car, it resonates the quality that I think we're going for. That's also matched by the way that they've integrated lighting into their design. Way 
are a completely vegan brand. You get the same quilting effect on these seats. Again, it represents the same feeling of quality, but seats are complicated and they take hundreds of thousands of hours to get right, so is it any good to actually sit in? Well, I think it's time we found out. Is all about the small touches. They want you to feel as if you're having a premium experience from the second that you enter it, and you immediately get that. The seat has moved backwards to allow entrance to me to be much easier. The seat actually feels great. Now it might well be that that just because it suits my body geometry. I'm five foot eight or 178 centimeters, but regular viewers will know I have very short legs and a very long torso. So if Cornelius pans up to my head, you can see that I have a fair amount of height where the sunroof is, but not a huge amount here. But that is because you can compare my height to around about six foot one, six foot two when I'm seated. And I have to tell you, this seat is in its lowest possible position. However, Cornelius is a real and honest, well over six feet tall, and he tells me that he finds the seats equally as comfortable. Is that correct? Yeah, that's correct. Okay, so first impression sitting in the car, seat, absolutely great. Full marks. Not so fast though. Steering wheel, these buttons, especially not when they're high gloss. This is your first car, your first statement, and for me personally, the steering wheel is a massive statement of brand. So we'll find out if it's any good or not as far as the drive's concerned, but visually, that's not a hit for me. I would have liked to have seen something a little bit more driver focused. Actual physical buttons would have worked better for me, but still a bit more personality coming across in the steering wheel. So to give you the first initial impression of the interior function of this car, of course, I need to switch it on and you will instantly watch the seat. He said, hopefully glide forwards. Now. Okay. I got mixed feelings about that. I have to tell you, this is a pre-launch vehicle and therefore the software is not finished. I would like to hope in some way that that can be switched off if you own the car. Why? It's kind of charming. Yeah, it's kind of charming the first 15 times, but if I own this car, I don't know, that's gonna drag on me a little bit. Am I being unfair? The system does need to initialize, maybe a little bit, but rather like the Windows chimes. Nice once, not so much 10,000 times. This then is what you are presented with when you power up the car. So some interesting and I would say almost unique features here. The first being the driver's cockpit display. This has a diagonal measurement of around about nine inches. And as you can see, the glaringly obvious thing in the room is that it is very, very small. Now you might be looking at that straight off the bat and saying, I couldn't live with that. It's not gonna work. Well, there are some advantages to it. First of all, because it's so small, you don't get the very, very common driver conflict of not having your head in the right position relative to the steering wheel to get a full display. Because of that long torso and short arms, weird geometry thing that I have going on, almost every single car I drive, the top of the display is cut off by the top of the steering wheel in the best driving position. Well, not so here because the display is so small, I can see it no matter what I do with it and Wei aren't just thinking that you're going to be using this. Their big story is all about this, and that's their head-up display. Their idea is you should have your eyes on the road anyway. Why worry about this? We want to make sure all the information you need as a driver is projected in the safest place, which is direct onto the road. 14-inch infotainment screen. You pretty much can't buy a car that doesn't have a version of this now one way or another. So what's it like? Well, we don't want to be too judgmental because we know that this is pre-release software. So it's going to be a little bit buggy, but let's take a look on the home page. And guys, I know you know I prefer physical buttons, but yeah, I get it. This is the way the future functions. So I'm trying to adapt to it and get used to it. As it's all obviously unique software, I like the way that they have tried at least to keep this clean and straightforward. Even I can remember that that's where the home is. And from that, it's pretty straightforward for my most basic functions, so I should be able to access them. Now, it is important to note in this car that if you do want to make any changes to more or less anything, you have to go through the infotainment system. And that's really important to know because as with all tech systems, there's going to be a learning curve. 
Is that going to take you a lifetime and irritate the heck out of you? Well, we're going to find out an awful lot more about that once we get driving. But in the meantime, you can see the basic idea. Homepage there, apps here. Now, although because pre-release this doesn't have Apple CarPlay or Android Auto, it will do. They promised me that, so it's going to be coming. Now, let's take a look at this. This is their camera system, and obviously this is not unique. But one thing I think is particularly well delivered here is this angel eye or drone view over the top of the car. It's obviously synthesized based on the cameras that the car has, but I think this is particularly well delivered. I really like the way the information is presented, and clearly it's very useful for managing to maneuver. This is not a small car, and making sure you don't hit things is really rather important. So you can see all of the different functionality that you have here. Let's try switching that to 3D. I don't want to be too harsh on this software because, as I said, it's pre-release and it's always going to have a bit more updating to do. This, right at the bottom, is where the real meat is and this is where you make all of the adjustments to the system. And you can change not only the colour of that lighting, ooh, but also the intensity of it. I appreciate he said, struggling to make the system recognize what he wanted. I appreciate the ability to, that's really not ideal, but I think that's probably the pre-release issue right there. I appreciate that because as much as color's fun, when you start out, sometimes it gets a bit much, so at least you can knock it off. I like the random selection. Those lighting strips also carry on through the sides of the center console. Fully digital heating and <laughs> air conditioning system integrated into the console. So it's not only that that you can control from here, you also have the front and rear window heating, you have two drinks holders, and then slightly below that, I really like this, a secure phone holder storage. Look at that, that's great. Now that should have inductive charging and there's actually a spot for inductive charging underneath this central section, we'll show you in a little bit, with USB-C and standard USB charging points and a 12 volt charging point as well. But I think because this is pre-release software, I haven't so far had any luck with the inductive charging function on this car. But I really like this as a feature, and as you can see, that's an S21 by the way, and there's plenty of space. So even if you have an even bigger phone, it's still gonna fit right here in the center console. Let's take a look in the rear. Well, this should be where this car really starts to shine. Why? You may not know this, but in China, a lot of people do not drive their own cars. Having a driver is very, very common. So therefore, a lot of Chinese-built platforms start with a very luxurious and large rear and a less luxurious and sumptuous front. Now, this is slightly different to that because a lot more attention and detail has been put into the front design. So right off the bat, I guess I would have liked to have seen a rear door with a little bit wider of an open angle just to make it slightly easier to get into the rear. Yeah, I'm being picky, but it's getting more and more common on SUVs to see full 90 degree opens and it's really nice. But that said, once you get in here, oh, it's cavernous. Huge amounts of space, and as you may be able to see, my concerns about that swooping roof line were completely unfounded. I have more than enough room back here. Now, this front seat is set for me, so it's not really a fair comparison. Again, short legs. But if I slide over to behind Cornelius, who has his seat set for a regular human being, you can see that still I have massive amounts of room. It's very comfortable and spacious back here. And this panoramic roof makes it feel light, airy, and nice too. I really feel you could travel a long way in quite a lot of comfort back here. And if you're back here to work, well, you have USB-C and USB-A charge points. Back round to the rear again, it's time to look at the load space in this thing. Now, if you're interested in one of these and you have a need to tow something, you can tow up to 2,000 kilograms on one of these things. So you're not gonna have too much of a problem with anything including anything you're gonna to wanna to store in the back. As you can see, I have a lot of room back here. Now, sadly, I don't actually have a number for you in terms of liters. I love it when you can do that from the back. But as you can tell, and I'm literally gonna come round to the rear seat so you can see, 
This thing is voluminous. It's a large SUV, so you really should feel that you've got more than enough space. I love the way these seats fold more or less exactly flush with that flat load floor. That just makes sliding things in here super simple. And as you can see, there's acres of room. Now that fold flat floor actually does, I'm quite impressed with myself for saying that bit of alliteration twice without getting it wrong. So you can see I've got more storage underneath here. Tire stuff, charging stuff, and other little discrete areas. That's about the size of room that you have though. So those batteries do eat up a fair amount of space, but as you can see, you can fit an awful lot of kit back here. Now if I look at the top of this, this is a really good example of where we're not quite there yet. This finishing is okay. It certainly isn't terrible, it feels durable, but I just like a little bit more attention to detail. But you know what? With 20,000 in the bank, I'm pretty sure I'm gonna be able to add some of my own touches and still have cash left over. Well, not a huge amount to look at there, but the story is obviously in the performance. That hybrid electric energy is paired with an internal combustion engine. Obviously, that gives you a system output of 350 kilowatts, and that will produce 460 horsepower, making this beast travel from zero to 100 kilometers per hour in just five seconds with a top speed of 235 or 146 miles per hour. Now, just to clear this up, if you're looking at all of this and thinking, I just don't know how I feel about the idea of investing in a hybrid right now because the next change that I'm expecting is gonna be a full electric. I would say, well, hang on. To my mind, even though Way say that they would love to be taking away Mercedes customers, BMW customers, Audi customers, I don't quite see it that way. I think what this is going to do is appeal to people who would love one of those cars, but simply can't quite justify the budget. So the question is, will this deliver what those cars deliver if you can live without the badge on the front? Clearly, it's a brand new entrance to market with the best will in the world, even if it's the greatest car anyone ever saw, it's not gonna be able to outperform those brands right off the bat. So, first target customer for me, somebody who wants that car but can't afford it. Second target customer, somebody who wants to lay down some heavy miles on a car but plans to only keep it maybe three to five years because they are planning to go full electric as and when. Well, we're gonna to get to the inside, but just before we do that, let's take a look at the electric charging points. So the fill up for the petrol tank is around the other side of the car, but this is where we can find AC and DC charging. And just to let you know what this car can deliver, you should be able to get to full charge in around about 53 minutes if you're going with DC fast charging. If you go with standard AC charging, that's gonna be about three hours and 50 minutes, obviously on a fast charging platform. So pretty respectable figures, but it's a hybrid, which means you just don't have to spend too long concerning yourself with whether and if you have enough charge for your daily drive around town. Let's do the zero to 100 test. So first of all, we're gonna put it into sports mode. <laughs> okay, that's never gonna stop making me laugh. Now, apparently the difference with sports mode and standard is that the petrol engine never shuts off, so you always have that availability of power. Station restart, and off we go. Actually, <laughs> that, there you go, that was 100. That's a lot more exhilarating than I was expecting. How about you, Cornelius? Yeah. I really didn't think it was actually gonna give me a little kick, but you know what, it did. Five seconds, more than enough power than you can want, and it really is still quite a lot of fun. But you know what, that's a straight road. I think it's about time we found out what this thing does on some curves. Well, other than our luggage rolling around, it is not a small vehicle, and it has an awful lot of battery weight in it. So it's really nice to see how nimble it still feels. Oh, the brakes are great. Now, obviously they're not sports brakes, but they're responsive enough without being too urgent. I'm imagining you're gonna be traveling with people in the back of this thing. And you can stop. Do you feel in any way? No. Was that uncomfortable? No. It's very comfortable, right? Yeah. You feel you have a, a nice, yeah, for the, for the weight and profile of the vehicle, there's a nice bend coming up here. You never feel once that the car's not in control, do you? 
And that's not by any stretch of the imagination giving it its full braking potential. What do you think? Should we go right? Oh, left. Left. Left, says Cornelius. <laughs> okay, off we go. So we're going to pull out of this junction at speed on lock to see how the handling oh, behaves. Oh, that's clear. That's exactly like the braking. There's no way I would have expected it to handle that well. You? Guys, I have yeah. to tell you, because I don't want to sound like just I'm a massive fanboy and I'm just saying, you know, these things for the sake of just saying them. I really think this car is great. I absolutely can't wait for you to test it and tell me what you think. But I'm really going to take a bit of convincing that there's a reason why you need to spend the extra money. Let's not forget, right, if you buy one of these things, a huge amount of all of this tech is already bundled in. If you buy one of the competitors, you have to pay extra, extra, extra for every last thing you want. So there's actually an awful lot of good reasons to at least look at this car. And every single new thing I do to it, where I expect it to disappoint me, it just doesn't stop making me smile. Yes, the steering is a little on the light side, but that makes it feel very maneuverable through town. And don't forget, the steering is in normal mode at the moment, and that is exactly how it's designed to make you feel. So, first challenge. Where are we going? We're going here. Great. And we've hit highway at exactly the right time because I wanna see what those five seconds feel like when I put my foot down. Don't forget, it's in normal driving mode. This is not a light car with 40 kilowatt hours of battery. Damn. I don't think I could possibly want any more than that. Cornelius, you? No, it's enough. No, it's more than enough. And the first thing you note about this car is that it's interesting idiosyncrasies which you're not used to because completely new platform, completely new structure. The noises, I think they've done a really good job with the sonic landscape in here. It makes all kinds of whistles, cheeps, and bizarre interruptions. And I hope in later software iterations, as you get more and more used to the car and you don't need those things, that you'll be able to adjust them, adapt them, turn them off. But it does make a really good job of making the car feel like a very friendly driving experience. So let's go through it. Seat, excellent, really great. When I looked at the interior of the car, I found it a little bit austere, didn't have enough personality. I was worried that the drive was gonna feel a bit the same way. It absolutely doesn't. These seats are fantastically comfortable. Now, because of my absurdly long torso, I sit as low in the car as I can ever get. You can tell why I don't have a lot of headspace to play with. This car, because of the type of car that it is, it really feels like you're somewhat sitting in a tank, or at the very least, a boat. I'm very low down into the center of the vehicle, but because it's quite a shallow and small front windshield, that means the car overall doesn't feel as big as it actually is. That's a huge benefit in a large SUV, and that's why I really like this lighter steering application, because it makes me feel much more maneuverable and agile than I ordinarily might expect to in a car of this size and type. So, steering matches seating experience. Position in vehicle, great. Handling of the car? Well, again, given the size and weight of this thing, it feels surprisingly agile and responsive. Really nicely put together. No squeaks, no whistles, no nothing. So, good steering, good seating, good position. What else are we gonna check? Ah, lousy visibility. Well. You can't win them all. Now, always an important point to mention that your visual surroundings have an awful lot to do with your position within the vehicle. So in my case, I've got this strange geometry going on. It's entirely possible that that's why I have terrible visibility over here, but this B pillar is huge. So everything further forwards of it is great. Easy to look at, easy to respond to, and fantastic. But checking your blind spot in this car 
is not funny at all. So good to have all of that onboard technology helping you out and making sure that the car knows what's going on around you, even if you don't. And talking about that onboard technology, we're gonna have to talk about this head-up display. It's really, really good. Every car manufacturer that you test for will tell you we have the best head-up display anyone's ever seen, and you get used to going, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's not that this one has the best display necessarily, it's that it's the most interesting application I've seen of it. Here's a perfect example of that. As I corner, the head-up display moves so I can see which way I'm cornering. Now, that's not a new idea, but the way that it's applied here is really great. At first, you sort of have to pinch yourself to ask, am I imagining this? It feels that natural. The projection on the road is exactly where you want it. The information is really nicely delivered and it just makes the car feel almost fun. Fun is not a word I associate with a large SUV. A car just went past me in the fast lane and in order to tell me that, I had a really nice red border. It's nicely graphically designed, came up on the left and again, just made me feel that the car was a little bit more than just a digital machine giving me information. So let's just check out that overtaking again. I'm gonna put my indicator on, put my foot down. As you can see, I can't see my blind spots at all. Effortless. It feels as secure and safe at speed as it does when it's going slower. So really nice performance. So, head-up display, all kinds of fun. It even marks out the car in front with a little green sort of locator like this, a bit like a horseshoe to tell you whereabouts the car in front is. And if you get too close, that turns to red to warn you to back off. And our cheerful friend here will inform me if she feels that I'm driving too fast for the environment. Now that's kind of a fun way to learn the car and learn the systems. Again, I hope that's a feature they will allow you to turn off once you're a little bit more familiar with the platform. So, overall, I would say this car delights, and I'm not overstating that. The reason I say that is that so many times when I test drive a vehicle, I have expectations here and the delivery is here. And I have to be honest, after I saw this car in Paris, my expectation was here, but the delivery of this car is here. And these seats are so comfortable. You could sit in them for hours. I really think if you're looking for a larger SUV and you plan on putting a lot of miles in it, you would be crazy not to look at this. Now, if you say, okay, that's all great, Brian, but I'm worried about servicing and maintenance. How easy is it gonna be to get this thing taken care of? Well, listen, I can't obviously make any commitments on that front because I have no idea the practical application of what it's gonna be like owning one of these things yet. But I can tell you that Way are not messing around. They've taken on board one of the largest dealer networks in Europe. So they obviously are coming into the market with a full expectation that they want you to have as much pleasure out of the service of this car as you should have out of owning one. I can't say enough. So many people buy BMWs, Audis and Mercedes and they don't buy the best exemplar of those cars, they just want the badge. And if you buy a bad one of any of those three brands, everyone has a story to tell about owning one of those things it's much less pleasant than owning something different. This car, yeah, I get it. None of your neighbors are likely to say, wow, you got away, but it won't matter because once they've driven with you in it somewhere or borrowed it from you to haul around immense amounts of their children going to university and all of their gear, they're gonna say, you know what? Not only is that car great, but it made me smile. And there aren't that many large SUVs I can think of off the top of my head that do that. In actual fact, I can tell you this. The last time I drove an SUV that I enjoyed as much as I'm enjoying driving this car is the Skoda Kodiak back in the day. And it was almost for exactly the same reason. I just wasn't that convinced that it was a good departure for Skoda and I didn't know how well they would execute it but it was great and it still is a great car. And I think this has the capacity to be exactly that. 
Fascinatingly, one of the things I thought would drive me nuts and I definitely couldn't live with is this tiny, tiny driver's display in the middle right here. But you know what? Way told me I wouldn't care and I wasn't going to look at it, and they're absolutely correct. Now, I absolutely passionately hate these driver's controls on the steering wheel, but I will give them credit where credit's due. There are vast amounts of information you can cycle through on the right side of this screen using this function here. I don't know how well the camera's going to pick that up, but just at a casual glance, I can see about nine different types of information I can cycle through on this system to tell me anything I could ever want to know about this car. But they were absolutely correct. I couldn't care less. I don't need to know about that while I'm driving the car. Everything I need is right here on this head-up display. Amazingly, exactly for once, as they promised me. So there you have it. It's a really good value proposition. But more important than that, I honestly don't think you're buying this car just to save money. I think you're buying this car because it's a really good car. It's got fantastic crash results. It's got amazing performance in pure electric mode, which means if you use this as your daily commute, you're never even gonna to need to worry about the consumption figure at all. It's got superb range, which means you can forget about the range anxiety of a pure electric. But more important than any of that, it's fun and it's easy to drive. So for me, it's always gonna be about the dealer network, the maintenance and the support. Can I trust that? Is it gonna work? Is it gonna be good? But if we make a compelling enough proposition of that, the rest of this is actually pretty great. Don't take my word for it. Give it a try. Check out the review I did statically in Paris because there you can find the engineer who will talk to you about exactly what they did and why they did it. That's well worth a watch. Failing that, you've got to look at the competitors from BMW, Mercedes and Audi and really ask yourself, is it just the badge you need? Because if that's all it is, you really should be taking a look at this car.